Okay, so um, I'm going to try and keep it short and brief and powerful and uh, just share with you what, what God's been um, sharing with me the last while. And I know that it's going to encourage you greatly. But, you, we, you know, we only really, um, we need to see the fruit of it. You know, truth, we need to embody truth. We need to, uh, it must become part of you. You know, it's, it's not information, it's there for Every every word of God is inspired. You know, it's, it, the Bible says it's breathed, and so God breathes into us. So when when the when the word is ministered, it must uh, it must bring life to us, to the earth. So okay, so we're gonna go for it. I'm, I'm gonna start in Luke, um, chapter eleven, and uh, from verse one, it says it happened that while Jesus was praying in a certain place after he finished. One of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, okay? And um, just as, as John also taught his disciples, he said to them, when you pray, say, Father. Okay, so he starts with, um, with uh, say, Father. And I think, I think when, when Jesus taught them to pray, that's probably the, one of the, most, the, most, the first most important ingredient was to say Father. So, um, because it's very important, He wants us to understand that we are His children. We are, we are God's children. We are not beggars. We are not slaves. And um, uh, so, when I understand that God is my Father, it changes my prayer life yeah, in a massive way. It changes my, my faith in, in a massive way. You see, um, I've said before, like every religion tries to get you to God, tries you to pray to God, but, but Jesus takes you to the Father. Jesus takes, uh, establishes you as a child of God, and, and that, that changes everything. And I wish more Christians, more of us, including myself, would, would live in the reality uh, as children of God. So on Sunday we spoke about you know, Peter walking on water, and, and Peter walked on water in the authority of, of Jesus' word when he says, come. And he did that, uh, not even being born again, like we have in the New Testament. We receive the Spirit of God, and we are born uh, again. And so, um, our, we often uh, find our identity in Peter, and God wants us to find our identity in the Son, as a child of God. And so we need to pray. We, our prayer life needs to be um, affected by, by this Father. You know? So when He teaches us to pray, it's, it's not a business. It's, it's a family. And uh, so this, this chapter um, in the book of Luke, he's, He says, Father. In Matthew chapter 6, He teaches us to say, Our Father. So we'll focus on that on another time. Um, so, uh, we're going to come back to Luke 11, two scriptures that I want to read for you tonight. If we go to Romans chapter 8 and verse 15, uh, it says, let me just find it here. Alright. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading again to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry, Abba, Father, Abba, Father. So inside of you, the spirit is crying, Father. You know, so we need to agree with that spirit. You know, so um, that's who you are you know, as, as a child of God. So, right, so apply. Apply. This is not good stuff to, to know. It's stuff to, to believe and to become part of you. So be established in, in that. Okay. So I want you uh, go back to Luke 11. All right. So remember um, John chapter 1 says, Whoever believes in him, he, he, God has given him the right to be called the children of God. So back to Luke 11. All right. So, so Jesus just taught us to pray. Um, Father, okay, holy is your name, your kingdom come, give, it, give us each day our daily bread. So who gives you daily bread? 
the Father gives you daily bread. So now in the same context, go to verse 5. Okay? Then he said to him, Suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, lend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine who is on a journey has just come to visit me and I have nothing to serve him. And from inside, from inside, he answers, Do not bother me. The door has already been shut, and my children and I are in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything just because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence and boldness, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. And then, so Jesus says, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. But what's interesting if you read on, so I, um, for everyone who keeps on asking receives and he who keeps on seeking finds. Then he says, verse 11, What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? You see now, he's speaking about the father. So now you have a friend knocking on the door. But the, 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 this, this parable that he's telling him, he says the children are inside the house. <laughs> so we need to understand, are you the friend knocking? Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Or are you the child that's in the house with the Father? And that's what Jesus said in John 14. He says, in my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Okay, and so then I'll return and receive you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. So Jesus, as the child of God, he went through the, you know, the whole process of the cross and the resurrection to bring you to the dwelling place of the Father. So now when you pray, you are not an outsider. You can sing the song, I am a friend of God. That's, that's powerful in a, in, in a way because it's good to be friends of God. You know, um, you you. Uh, you can be friends with your father but to ultimately understand that you are in the house you are in the dwelling place and so when you pray you say father all right so that's that's what i have to share tonight make sure that um uh, that you apply it make sure that you that you um you see i have to tell yourself i'm a child of god Interesting what came out as well on Sunday, and I'm going to close with this, is that um, it's interesting that, that God never called, God never said, hey, Jesus. You know, he didn't call him by his name, Jesus. He always said, son. And uh, that's what Hebrews 1 says. He has, um, he has given him a rank that is far above angels. And he says, for to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son. And I want, want you to know that uh, he calls you his child. And that if we can ask in the name, you know, of, and understand who we are, as we are as children, it will affect your prayer life. It will affect the boldness, the way that you can ask. Um, you, it, will, it will affect the idea of authority that you think you have. You know, sometimes people think we must, someone put a post, I think it was, Danny Einke the other day put something so special on, on Facebook. She, she said, um, she said, you, you don't have to take authority. You already have authority. You need to use it. And most of it starts just in the, in, in the prayer room and in, in the dwelling place of God. So yeah, I trust that bless you. And um, yeah, so let's pray. Father, <laughs> Father, our Father, your name is holy. Your kingdom come. And you will be done in our lives. And we thank you for that. Um, that you care for us. And that, uh, yeah, that you're growing and maturing us into mature sons. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Amen.